Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Lifespan Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and impact of emerging science and technology. April is often associated with rebirth and renewal. We've added rejuvenation to the mix with cryptocurrency donation initiatives, biotechnology company progress, and plenty of research. Here's what's happened in the last month. Starting off with our research roundup. Scientists have shown that low carbohydrate consumption is significantly associated with increased insulin resistance in healthy, lean people. For this new study, the researchers recruited 120 healthy participants with normal BMI. The participants documented their diets for a week while wearing accelerometers to record their physical activity. The participants were then divided into three groups. The low-carbohydrate intake group consisted of those who received less than 4-5% of their calories from carbohydrates. The recommended carbohydrate intake group received 4-5% to 65%, and the high-carbohydrate intake group received more than 65%. There were no statistically significant differences between groups in mean age, which hovered around 30, physical activity, blood pressure, BMI, waist circumference, fat percentage, or calorie intake, which was monitored but not restricted. This study is one of the first to investigate the metabolic effects of carbohydrate consumption on lean, healthy, and relatively young people. While for all groups, the measured markers remained in their normal ranges, there was a significant and worrying trend towards insulin resistance among people who consumed low amounts of carbohydrates. The same might have been found true for overconsumption of carbohydrates, but that determination could not be made due to the lack of statistical power arising from the small sample size. Importantly, a large recent study showed a similar U-shaped relationship between carbohydrate intake and mortality. This evidence suggests that low-carb diets might be harmful to healthy people outside of the weight loss context. Scientists have concluded that rapamycin treatment started in early midlife can prevent age-related blood flow impairment in the hind limbs of the tested mice. Peripheral artery disease, or PAD, is defined as reduced blood flow to the lower limbs. Age is a major risk factor for PAD, as the disease affects as many as 25% of people over the age of 55 and 40% of people over the age of 80. PAD is also associated with atherosclerosis, diabetes, hypertension, smoking, and Alzheimer's disease. PAD can develop into a serious incapacitating condition and even require amputation. Rapamycin, which is well known for its effects on aging, has been previously demonstrated to improve cerebral blood flow in murine Alzheimer's models and peripheral blood flow in murine models of atherosclerosis. This new study began with an examination of aged but otherwise healthy wild-type mice. As expected, blood flow was significantly impaired in this group. In this initial experiment, rapamycin supplementation, started at seven months of age, was found to completely block this age-related effect. In the second experiment, the researchers used a mouse model of atherosclerosis with impaired production of LDL receptors. To induce atherosclerosis, these mice were also fed a high-fat diet. These mice had severely impaired blood flow, showing the converging deleterious effects of aging and the disease. Again, Rapamycin treatment was able to significantly protect blood flow, although this time, it was not quite to the level of young, wild-type controls. While the difference between rapamycin-treated mice and controls was not statistically significant, it was nonetheless noticeable. Finally, in mice of an established murine model of Alzheimer's disease, the researchers observed a similar pattern. Blood flow in the aged mice was severely restricted, but the mice fed with rapamycin were largely protected. The researchers note that in addition to rapamycin, interventions such as dietary restriction and intermittent fasting might improve peripheral blood flow and prevent peripheral artery disease, although this requires additional research. This study adds to our understanding of rapamycin's protective effects in an aging organism. PAD is a serious age-related condition that can contribute to other manifestations of aging by restricting the ability to exercise and socialize, and this knowledge of how to combat it is extremely valuable. Showing yet again that sleep is a serious matter, 
Scientists have reported that short sleep duration, snoring, and long naps are linked to a significantly elevated risk of acute stroke. Stroke is one of the most prevalent causes of death worldwide. Stroke is also highly age-related, with its likelihood doubling every 10 years after the age of 55. One study found that stroke reduces remaining life expectancy by 20% to 40% and the number of disability-free years by up to 90%. For decades, the effects of sleep quality on health have been largely overlooked. However, in recent years, sleep quality has emerged as one of the most potent moderators of health and possibly lifespan. One meta-analysis found that short sleep duration, less than 6 hours per day, was associated with a 12% increase in all-cause mortality. According to another study, the incidence of coronary heart disease was linked to short sleep duration and impaired sleep quality. In this new paper, the researchers found that various sleep characteristics were significantly correlated with stroke incidents. For example, people with an average night sleep duration of less than five hours were more than three times more likely to experience any kind of stroke than people with the reference sleep duration, which the researchers had set at seven hours. The researchers saw a clear U-shaped association, which is consistent with previous research. While too little sleep is a likely cause of health problems, too much sleep is often a symptom of a disease. In this study, people with prolonged sleep duration, more than 9 hours on average, were well over two times more likely to experience stroke than the reference group. Napping was positively associated with stroke risk as well, except for less than one hour in planned napping, in which the association did not reach statistical significance. People who often took long, unplanned naps had over two times higher odds of stroke. The researchers also found a significantly cumulative effect of short sleep duration and snoring, with sleep-deprived snorers being four times more likely to have a stroke. No significant interaction between sleep duration and other symptoms was detected. The model was adjusted for several potential confounders, such as occupation, marital status, alcohol consumption, physical activity, diet quality, body mass index, stress, depression, and history of diabetes. Interestingly, a previous analysis, published about a month ago, revealed a strong correlation between stroke and depressive symptoms. This study adds to the growing body of evidence showing the importance of sleep quality, which is often sacrificed or overlooked in modern society. Getting a lot of good quality sleep might be just as beneficial for your health as eating healthy or exercising. While this particular research paper is just an association study, serious symptoms such as obstructive sleep apnea should be dealt with as soon as possible. That's it for our research roundup. You can find more on these and other stories on our website at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. A new Life Noggin video has been released, this one discussing depression and possible treatments for it. Here's what that sounded like. This video is sponsored by our good friends over at Hollywood Health and Society. Triangle Bob has been going through some really tough times recently. He's been experiencing a persistent feeling of sadness and a loss of interest in many things he once loved. It's caused him to neglect his responsibilities and even things he enjoys. All of this is making him feel guilty. He feels like a failure, which in turn makes him feel even sadder and hopeless. Can you relate? This is the cycle of depression, or the depression loop. And for a lot of people, it's hard to escape. Let's take a closer look at what it is and how to break free from it. Cue the intro. Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Depression, also known as major depressive disorder, is one of the most common health conditions in the world. An estimated 2 to 6% of the global population has experienced it in the last year. And in the United States, about 1 in 3 women and 1 in 5 men will have an episode of major depression by the time they're 65. That's a lot of people. Depression often makes you feel more tired and less motivated and can affect your appetite and sleep. This may cause you to cut back or stop doing your normal activities, even the things you love, and then you feel overwhelmed as your to-do list keeps growing and growing and growing and you worry about being unproductive. And without the happiness and sense of accomplishment that these activities provide, depression only gets worse. It can be debilitating. But there are ways to stop this vicious cycle. The American Psychiatric Association recommends a combination of therapy and antidepressants, but both methods are effective when used alone as well. Evidence-based therapy like cognitive behavior 
behavioral therapy and mindfulness-based cognitive therapy have been found to improve symptoms 30 to 40 percent of the time. And it can also teach you skills such as relaxation techniques or lifestyle changes, or help you build a network of support, or find community resources like support groups, all of which can help you avoid recurrence. Antidepressants can reduce symptoms in 40 to 60 percent of people in just a couple of months, with relapses occurring about 23 percent of the time within the first two years. While medication can help reduce the symptoms of depression so that people can return to the activities that promote well-being, antidepressants are not a cure-all solution and are not right for everyone. Sometimes antidepressants require trial and error under the supervision of the prescribing doctor until the right medication or combination is established. But the most important thing is to remember that you are not alone. Depression can affect anyone, no matter the race, socioeconomic status, or how perfect their life may look from the outside. Don't be afraid to talk about it and seek out help as soon as possible safely. Triangle Bob is doing just that. He loves his therapist, Dr. Stick Figman. And while the journey is tough, Triangle Bob knows he'll see better days if he sticks with it. You see what I did there, Doc? Was that, you get that a lot? Okay, all right, I'll go away now. So have you been struggling with depression? Have you found anything safe that helps? A therapy success story you wanna share? If you're comfortable with doing so, tell us your story in the comments below. It might make people feel less alone at the very least. If you live in the United States, you can call or text the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration or find a therapist through the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. Links to that and other resources can be found in the description. Thank you so much to Hollywood Health and Society for making this video possible. If you wanna learn more about the incredible work that they do to educate educate the public and help support the causes they're fighting for, click the first link in the description right now to learn more. Lifespan News has also released a couple of new YouTube shorts, which served as quick updates on longevity science. The first dealt with the benefits of young gut, and the second discussed a possible way to address DNA damage. Here's both of them. I hope you had your Metamucil today because the key to extreme longevity could be young guts. You ever hear of having a strong stomach? A Chinese study revealed centenarians with greater species diversity in their gut bacteria experienced less change in their microbiomes over the 18-month study, suggesting microbial diversity increases stability and resilience. Particularly beneficial bacteria appear to be these, just screenshot them, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, but people who had these healthy bacteria showed beneficial health outcomes whether they were old or young. So start reading the labels on those probiotics. We talk frequently about the benefits of young blood and joke about having a blood boy when maybe we should really be considering having a poo boy. Gross. Check Lifespan.io for the full article and link to the study. The secret to defying the relentless march of age-related damage could be closer than we think concealed within the very building blocks of life. The dream protein complex is like a cellular command center that governs the way our cells manage DNA damage, which has a direct impact on aging and the development of age-related diseases. A study shows that inhibiting the dream complex enhances the DNA repair capacity of somatic cells in worms, mice, and human cells. DREAM represses DNA repair genes in somatic cells, and by inhibiting the DREAM complex, the cells became more resistant to ionizing radiation and the effects of cancer drugs. While the models used in this research may not perfectly replicate human aging, the findings offer valuable insights into the potential of reversing age-related damage accumulation by manipulating certain genes. To learn more about this topic and more, check out Lifespan.io. Find more Lifespan News videos on their YouTube channel. Wrapping things up with some quick news nuggets. First up, the winners of the Hypothesis Prize have been announced as part of the Longevity Prize initiative. This is an important step for funding rejuvenation research and sets a great precedent for future longevity-focused prizes and open science. The Longevity Prize is a decentralized science initiative aiming to accelerate research efforts. This is a series of prizes to honor and accelerate progress in longevity and rejuvenation that has been brought to you by Vita Dow, Foresight Institute, the Methuselah Foundation, and Lifespan.io. The first place winner was Carlos Galicia, who brings attention to the suggestion that studying the process of renewal that occurs during the formation of an embryo could be a potential solution for age-related decline. To do this, Researchers would need to observe how aging marks in gametes develop over the course of embryogenesis, 
and explore the techniques used by the embryo to rejuvenate itself. To gain a better understanding, the article proposes the use of deep phenotyping, single-molecule real-time DNA sequencing, and multiomic data analysis. It also mentions the possible clinical implications of the study's findings. Next up, Life Biosciences, a company co-founded by Dr. David Sinclair, has recently claimed that it has reversed a form of neuropathy in non-human primates through gene therapy and epigenetic reprogramming. According to Sinclair, demonstrating rejuvenation in non-human primates is a major step forward in advancing cellular rejuvenation as a way of treating both common and rare diseases in the eye and potentially other tissues. Finally, the decentralized autonomous organization Vita Dao is currently gathering together participants in Montenegro for a pop-up mini-city event in order to create a unique jurisdiction for medical innovation within a more effective regulatory framework. Held between March and May 2023, the mini-city experiment is hosting several workshops and events. The topics will include cryptography, synthetic biology, the concepts of pop-up cities and digital tribes, and multiple facets of the DAO ecosystem, and longevity. Participants have the opportunity to learn about longevity innovations, take part in workshops and initiatives to improve their own longevity, engage in the latest discourse in biotech, and engage in the conference's primary topic of a new jurisdiction and regulatory framework for longevity. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for spending another month with us and for your help in the fight against age-related diseases. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about us on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Mm -hmm.